<laughs> well, I'd just like to say thank you for the words, but, you know, we need this too. And if it's mutual need, then there can be mutual cooperation to find a solution to a problem that is bringing all of America down. See? So let's, let's try to find a way that we can dialogue. Blacks and right. Jews and blacks and whites. I'm not against a relationship, but it just can't be the master-slave relationship. That's all right. over. Uh, but you can't. Um, I assume, given the uh, fallout that ensued in your description of Judaism as a dirty religion, will move you never to use that uh, phrase again. I think someone in the audience said it right. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on who? <laughs> on you. On me. Yes, because you keep repeating the big lie. Right, right. The lie that's told over and over and over and over again. No, I have said over and over again. Until I have no... Jews and blacks and others believe that I actually said that. Let me... You didn't again. say that? No, I did not. Now you're going to accuse me of taking this out of context, no, aren't I'm you? No, I'm not either. I'm going to play your but, own voice. I did this you. before. You're accusing me of taking it out of uh, context. This is cut. This is number three. Mr. Let me just say, Minister Farrakhan, sure. I don't get any. This is no joy to be going around the block with you again on this. But when you no smile, joy to me. Well, but when you smile, it conveys a kind of oh, stop worrying about this. I know what I meant. This is not the precision of language that we would expect from a man whose mind is so admired by the last person who stood up. Well, now let's. Now let's. Here we go again. Roll the tape. Here is your voice and the words uh, graphic. Never have had any peace in 40 years and he will never have any peace because there can be no peace structured on injustice, thievery, lying and deceit and using the name of God to shield your dirty religion under his holy and righteous name. To shield your gutter religion under his holy and righteous name. No. You said that. That's your voice. I want to say that no sane, intelligent, religious person could ever condemn the revealed word of God from the source of purity as dirty or gutter or unclean. The word of God comes to people in the gutter to purify their actions and their conduct and cause them to live upright. But religion is not what we preach. Religion was and is what we practice. And that's why Moses told Israel, Obey the law and statutes and commandments that I give you this day. Jesus said, Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. And Muhammad taught, that mere belief counts for nothing except that it is carried into practice. I close this and I hope I never have to answer this again. Black people are in this country because so-called Christians not practicing the true word of Jesus Christ right. were practicing a dirty religion. Right. Some so-called Muslims were involved in the slave trade and in some wicked dealings in Africa not doing what the prophet said but practicing dirty religion so Muslim and I said sir that Israel practice dirty religion taking the land from the Palestinians using lying thieving and murder and the name of God as a shield for their dirty practice in the name of God uh -huh. and this is a travesty in religion uh -huh. yeah. you never in your life used the phrase dirty religion when referring to Muslims not never, in that context never before I would, no, please did you sir, ever say that a Muslim do not, did you ever refer course. to their dirty religion of course of course there, there's too much hypocrisy in religion All right, let's talk about this and thing. that's why the world is okay. in the condition that it's in Mr. Farrakhan sir you are drawing thousands and thousands of people in your public appearances 
You have the cops, and uh, you claim the FBI and the CIA is on your case, and I wouldn't doubt that myself. <laughs> you, uh, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Uh, media's responsibility is to figure this person out. Wow. You powerful. Look at this crowd here. You're a powerful man. You can draw a crowd. You're also a religious fundamentalist. Doesn't make you bad, but that's what you are. And you also had this to say about a black reporter for the Washington Post who quoted Jesse Jackson as using the word Jaime Town. Tell me why you're upset about this. Here is here is Mr. Farrakhan talking about Milton Friedman. Here is, uh, I'm sorry, Milton Coleman. Roll the tape. Listen to this. Yeah, come on. Now, Does that make you proud? Yes. Does the no, man have a responsibility to speak to this? Of course. Then I, why? Then tell your people then to then, be. Then let me speak to it. Now, if you would be honest, that tape was cut up and pieced together. Let's just a minute. Oh, just a minute. You didn't say? You just didn't a minute. say he should be just killed? Just a minute. You know, it's interesting how white folk sit here thinking that I have a reason to lie to you as though you are so powerful and you are so wonderful and I'm so ashamed of my words that I have to twist and turn. Please, you're not dealing with that kind of man. You're dealing with a man who means what he says and says what he means. Now listen, put that in context of a campaign where Jesse Jackson was trying to be the first man to be nominated from the Democratic Party to be the president right. of the United States. He made a statement off the record to a black reporter. And that black reporter gave that statement to a white reporter and it came out in the Washington Post and from that day, poor Jesse, started slipping in the polls with white people. And so I took Milton Coleman to task. I referred to him in the language of a traitor. I referred to him, and these are the actual words. I said that that man should be ostracized from us when he comes to church. Tell him. You're not wanted until you repent. This is what I said. And then I said, one day, soon, when we have a nation, we will punish our traitors with death like you punish yours. Now, just a minute. Let me finish. I talked to Milton Coleman. I want you to know this, Phil, and your audience. I talked to Milton Coleman by telephone right after it came out in the press that I threatened his life. And when I said to Milton, Milton, I did not threaten your life, nor your children's, nor your wife's. Milton said to me, Farrakhan, if you will go before the public and say that, I'll sit down and talk with you. I said, Milton, I'll do one better than that. I said, I'll be on Nightline tonight, and I will say it on national television. He said, where will you meet with me? I said, I'll meet with you anywhere you want to meet. And Milton said, will you meet me at the Washington Post? I said, yes. I went on Nightline and made that statement. And the next day I called Milton Coleman. And Milton Coleman told me that the people at the Washington Post forbid him from seeing me. That was six years ago. And the other day I sat in front of Milton Coleman at the Washington Post for the first time in six years